Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is another garden vlog and if you've been following along in these garden vlogs, it's been a ton of fun so I'm really glad that you're back for another one. Today we are starting off the vlog doing something that I honestly never thought that I would do. <laughs> I am mowing the lawn, okay? So unfortunately, Daniel hit his head really, really hard and is down and out for the count for a couple days or more. So me and my allergies are about to mow the lawn. I know, pretty crazy. So it's really, really tall right now. Like the grass is extremely tall because it has been raining basically nonstop for the last... 15, 16, 17 days, like really for the better part of almost a month, it's been raining. So we do have obviously like sunshiny moments and it usually rains like overnight and stuff like that. But even so we have not been able to mow the lawn because it was too wet and it didn't rain yesterday and it's not going to rain today. So today is really like the best day that we have to mow the lawn because tomorrow and all the days thereafter, I think it's going to rain. So Anyway, uh, lots to do today, so I'm just going to practice mowing the lawn <laughs> on our gigantic lawnmower. If you saw last week's adventure, you know that the lawnmower is a little bit scary to me, but we're just gonna get it done. Um, also, I've been having some really bad seasonal allergies, so we're just gonna see how this goes. I can already feel my allergies acting up. Um, I have a hanky to blow my nose. Where is it? I don't have a hanky, I'll have to go get it. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna do this thing and I would love to accomplish a ton of stuff in this video, but we will just have to see. I am going to be renting an auger to drill the holes for the posts for the fence. Um, I think my father-in-law might help me with that. I'm not exactly sure, but Daniel certainly can't help me. So either I get a one person auger or my father-in-law helps me, but either way, it's gonna get done. So anyway, that's the deal, but I have to show you just really quickly. Look at how pretty. Oh my gosh. It's as if she knew that my favorite color of hydrangea is purple. I don't like love when they're blue. I do love when they're pink, like that one's pink, but I just love when they're purple. This is just such a pretty color. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with you. Okay, let's get to work. I cannot get distracted by pretty flowers. I'm doing some good work today and uh, let's get started. <laughs> mode and I took some time even up there is done but I took some time to cool off because it's very warm and get a hold of my allergies because it was very <laughs> allergy -y for me for a minute there but now I have to get out this big wagon tool that's basically like a grass vacuum and it picks up the grass as I'm driving along because the grass was so high. Um, it was basically just shooting out grass everywhere and it's too much to just like hope that it will be fine and like mulch back into the grass. Like there's just too much, there's too much of it. So we have to pick it up uh, by we, I mean I. And then we have like a really big pile um, on the back of our property that's basically like a gigantic burn pile. Basically, before we bought our house, they dug out this big area around our lagoon, which is basically like a sewage pond. So gross, but apparently it's like what everybody does here. So it was like really overgrown around it. So they had to cut down a bunch of trees surrounding it. So now there's just like a gigantic pile of dead trees. <laughs> and we just put the grass over there in that pile. I might still try to rent an auger today. 
I don't think I'm gonna have time to do it today. Yeah, I'm not. It's almost three. I'm not gonna have time to do it today. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and get to get to work here. Good morning everybody. It is a new day. It is about 10 o'clock and I've already been out to buy some posts for the fence. I bought eight cedar 4x4x10 four by four by posts and I'm hoping that that will cover quite a few. I don't know. I know that I'm going to need probably eight more but the price on that wood is a hard pill to swallow so kind of buying it in two transactions or maybe three transactions just feels a little bit more palatable but yeah wood is extremely expensive you should you should know this if you're just like a human in the end I think that it'll be very worth it because it will look exactly how I wanted we have this like plot of fake grass that the previous owner put down I don't know why still trying to figure out why the heck they did that maybe to extend the patio or something I don't really know but the the soil underneath there is really, really fertile. There's a lot of worms and everything, so I'm assuming it's fertile. Um, so I'm gonna be planting some stuff on the edges, and then on the inside of it, I'm gonna put stones, which I haven't purchased the stones yet, so I'm just going to fold back the uh, grass carpet to the point where I want to plant, and then I'm gonna plant, and then I'm gonna leave the grass carpet in the middle so that the dog's feet when they walk out don't get all muddy because this is like our walkway in and out. Well, their walkway really. They're the, really the only ones that go out like in the yard. Dan and I don't really go out there. I don't know why. There's really no reason. <laughs> okay, so that's the plan for right now because I have some stuff that really needs to get in the ground or it will have been a waste and I don't want to do that. So let's do that. Alrighty, three planted over here replanted over here. Now this is a little bit too narrow for my taste. Um, so you can see pretty narrow. So I think that I'm going to add another row at least so that the walkway can be maybe as narrow as like that grass section there. So I'll add another row on either side and then fill it in with the big walking stones. I think that's what I want to do. But yeah, that's it for this little section it's now raining so i'm gonna go inside and probably do some editing to get that out of the way We just left the hardware store to get the wood and it's all in the back of my father-in-law's truck. So my father-in-law is still here. He's helping me with this, which is so amazing. I definitely want to film as much as I can. Now we're going over to Tractor Supply because we have to get the actual wire for the fence. So I haven't really talked about my plans for the fence like really at all. So let me just like quickly try to run it down. So I want to make a cedar fence and we've grabbed four by four uh ten four by four by ten cedar posts and then we just grabbed two by six by ten cedar wood pieces i don't know what they're called if it's not a post anyway slabs also we're going to be using wire fencing for the actual fence we have a wire fence around our backyard right now 
and I think it's fine, especially if it's braced by wood, it'll be pretty strong. So that's just what I decided to do. There's other options, but that seemed to be like the most cost effective option. Like you could do chicken wire, but chicken wire isn't very strong. And you could also do like steel fence, like for like everything steel, which is also expensive. So I'm just trying to, yeah, make the best of my funds see how far I can make everything go because I just spent my life savings on wood. Awesome. <laughs> but I mean, there were other options that like my father and I, father-in-law and I talked about instead of using wood for everything in the garden. But honestly, that's what I want. That's the look that I want. I've been saving up for this because I knew that wood would be expensive. So um, if you see an ad or a sponsorship on my channel, we can thank them for helping out with this <laughs> because yeah that's really what makes all of this possible is all that but whatever not not the point of me coming on here to talk to you so now we're going to go to tractor supply to get the actual wire fence and then we're also going to get the little staples to staple the fencing into the wood and then we're going to rent an auger we're going to rent a six inch auger uh just the whole thing the blade the actual machine to dig the holes because I don't have that. I don't have any of that. I don't know how many people actually do have all of that. So thankfully there's a rental place here in town. I think I'm going to rent it for like four hours and see how long that, see how well that takes us or see how far that takes us. I'm not really sure what else there is to say, but yeah, we're just going to dig the holes, stick the posts in. We're going to put some rocks in the holes. I think that's what he said might be good to keep them steady. That's the update for now. I'm really excited that we're finally doing this because this means that I can actually start planting, which has been something that I've been, obviously that's the whole point of the garden is to plant stuff, but I didn't want to plant anything because I just know that as soon as I did, somebody would come up and eat it <laughs> and not me or Daniel. It would be an animal or something. I just, with my luck, that's what would happen. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little update about what's going on, what we're doing right now. I'm a little nervous. I've never done anything like this. So I just don't know what to expect or anything like that, but it'll be good. So yes, I'll see you back at home. Everybody, reporting from digging hole world so this is really hard and um, takes a lot out of you to dig these holes but we have three of them dug which means that we're almost halfway there so we need to do the other three on the other side but really like the worst part of this all is that the area was not squared off I did not square off the area before I put everything down so it's been kind of difficult figuring out where we're going to put all the holes because um, I didn't think to square it off and like, I don't know, mark out all like mark out the location prior to laying everything down. Like I thought that the landscape cloth would do that for me, but that's not the case. So that's a lesson learned and we've wasted some time just figuring out where the heck we're going to put the holes. So something to think about. <laughs> when you do this is way at the beginning, mark out your location where you're gonna dig your holes cause that'll make it a lot faster. But we started off with an eight inch auger drill bit. That seems funny to call it a drill bit cause it's massive, but um, we started off with an eight inch one, but that was too big and it got stuck a lot. And we switched to a six, six inch, and that was working out a lot better. We actually have four by four posts so we were thinking that the eight inch would like have more space to like move the poles around if we needed. But um, yeah, 
six inches actually better. And then what else can I update you on? It's really, really wet and like my soil here is pretty much predominantly clay, which a lot of people have not criticized, but asked why I'm doing raised garden beds. And it's because the soil is so clay heavy everywhere on my property. I think just Missouri in general, maybe, but definitely my area, my property is super, super clay heavy. And I don't think that that's good for gardening. I don't know, and I'm second guessing, but that was a big reason why I didn't want to do in ground where maybe other people do choose to do in ground if their soil is not really clay heavy. But everyone that I've talked to and said that my soil was clay heavy was like, oh yeah, you're good to do the above ground boxes. So that's just that. Cause I, I get a lot of questions and comments about that. So now I really, really see that it's strictly clay down there. We did realize that we're gonna have to go buy more wood for the top because we're gonna put wood on, uh, so here's the posts. We're gonna put wood along the bottom and along the top or like somewhere in here to um, anchor in the, the fencing. And for the bottom, we're doing two by sixes, two by six by 12s. And then the top part, we're gonna do one buys, one by six by 12s. Um, it's a little more flimsy, but it'll hold the fencing in. So that's basically, oh, that's basically the update. I don't know when I'm gonna go buy that extra wood. Maybe we'll do that today, I don't know. But this is a lot of work, a lot of work. So I'm gonna get back to resting for a moment and then we'll continue digging. I don't know if I'm gonna film it because it's literally just exactly what you guys saw already. So maybe I'll catch up with you once all the holes are dug. Good morning, everybody. It is a new day and I wanted to just briefly show you what we've done so far. Um, we have four more holes to dig, which honestly sounds like hell right now. We're both really sore. Our arms and upper, just our upper body in general is very sore. <sighs> so basically what needs to be done today is drilling four more holes right here at the entrance because we have the two posts at the back let me get myself out of it. Two posts at the back. And we need to do four up at the front here because we're going to be doing an arbor at the front here, like a an arch. <laughs> so we need to do four here, but that's all that's left. We've kind of laid out the wood where it needs to go so that we kind of made sure that we had enough. And we sort of put some dirt back in the holes because we knew it was gonna rain and that's like full of water right now. You can see. The only thing that absolutely has to get done today is we have to dig those four holes. And then the rest of it I can save until tomorrow because I think that it's not raining tomorrow. Although the weather changes like every hour. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure what it'll ever be like but I, it is definitely gonna be raining like later in the day because we have a lot of dark cloud coverage. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's not gonna be raining and it's gonna be in like the 60s and 70s, which thank God, because yesterday it was 84 degrees and like 56% humidity, full sun. So it was so hot. We were both really, really at our limit, honestly. It was so hot. Um, like that humidity just really gets to you. I'm going to level out the poles to make sure that they're standing up straight and that they're not like wobbly um, so that we can put more dirt back into the holes and just figure out that whole thing. I don't know if we're gonna cement them down later or put rock or just put the dirt back in and hope that it's okay because they, it will be very structurally sound because there's gonna be a row of wood on the bottom and at the top anchoring everything together. So I think that it'll be strong enough. My father-in-law says he thinks it'll be strong enough, but when he gets back out here, I'll ask him what he thinks we should do about the holes to like fill them. Like if it's okay to just put all the dirt back in and like pack it tightly around it. Honestly, I have no idea. And I'm really glad that he's here because I have no clue. And especially with Daniel being out and like not able to do this, 
it's very helpful to have someone who knows what they're doing. So, but Daniel is recovering for anybody who's keeping up with his recovery. <laughs> he's doing better. Um, today he seems like a lot more himself, although the headache is still there. So I think that by Monday he'll probably be doing a lot better. But I decided that once this is all done, I'm gonna give myself a manicure because look at my nails, they look so bad. I forgot to take off my nail polish when it started growing out. You can see it's kind of like growing out there. Usually I take it off when it gets to that point, but I just didn't this time because I've been busy. So I'm gonna give myself a manicure to, re to reward myself for all of this hard work. <laughs> I am wearing actually a new pair of overalls. I got these and I didn't show them, I don't think. I'm just getting a lot of overalls right now, but I got these from an Etsy shop as well. I showed the first pair that I got yesterday I was wearing them. Ugh, my phone doesn't fit in any of these top pockets. Darn it. The overalls that I made for myself, I made the pocket custom to fit my phone like this so it doesn't fall out. Here's a little OOTD. <laughs> it's basically like the same denim wash as the ones that I made for myself, but they're definitely like more work wear. They got more pockets and lots of extra room as well. Let's start leveling out these posts. everybody so it was a crazy two days doing all this stuff and now I am alone again to do this stuff um, I think that it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay so I'm currently on the way to go to the hardware store again because I have to get gravel for inside of the holes I said earlier that I'm gonna put gravel in them because that's what father-in-law said is the best thing to do. I also did some research online and it said that for clay heavy soil, like mostly clay soil, gravel is a really great way to go because it still allows for drainage with the poles. What are they called? <sighs> Anyway, you know what I mean. It's, it allows for drainage and it just allows for things to still, um... <laughs> my brain is gone. Whatever, I don't need to explain this. Look it up, all right? If you don't believe me, just look it up. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get some gravel because, Let's talk about it excuse me, because that was the best option. And I don't know really what kind of gravel. He said to get coarse gravel, like gravel that you would put in your driveway. So I'm gonna go do that because the gravel that I purchased is not going to work because it would be too slippery in there because it's really like, uh, it's like soft stones. There's no like jagged edges on them. So I need to go find a couple bags of gravel 
it's not enough to get like a bulk order so I'm just gonna have to buy like I don't know I always underestimate it every single time but I'm thinking like four bags of gravel we'll just have to see we'll have to see what's available but I'm taking my oh if I drop the camera I'm taking my little car because it shouldn't be too much but yeah I'm ready to freaking keep moving are you this video is getting a little long so uh, stick with me you guys I really want to get the whole fence building process in this video I hope that I can do it in the next two days we will just have to see good morning so we're at another day in the in the garden doing the fence so I'm out here today because I'm setting the posts with rock I purchased rock last night and I came out here and I set one two three four five six seven of the posts because I wanted to do it by myself at first so that I knew kind of what was going on with them. And then I'm gonna show you maybe like one or two that I'm doing so that you can see what, how I'm doing this. I do have a question for you guys regarding the greenhouse situation. This is something that I felt I could wait on because I'm spending a lot of money on the garden area, like a lot of money, right? The first year of your garden is always the most expensive and then you add on the fence because the fence is pretty much non-negotiable. I have to have a fence. I've already seen animal tracks in the garden beds because they're probably curious about what's going on. So I already know that deer, uh, rabbits, squirrels, possums, raccoons, everything lives in my backyard. I've seen them. And um, <clears throat> so if at any point you're wondering why I'm going through the trouble of putting in a fence, that's why. I live on wooded acreage. So it kind of comes with the territory, right? I have to do this. So with that being said, it is a lot more expensive than the average garden would be. And I don't know if I hired somebody to do it if it would have been cheaper. It honestly didn't even cross my mind. I did do that with the garden beds. Like I told you guys a couple videos ago, I hired somebody to make these because it was just cheaper to do it that way because they purchased the wood in bulk. But if I was to buy the bulk on my own, sorry, if I was to buy the wood on my own, it would have been so much more expensive, like probably double the price. So it just worked out that way. And I'm wondering if it would have been cheaper to hire someone to do the fence. It certainly would have been easier. <laughs> but the reason that I'm talking to you guys about this is because the greenhouse. We know that I want to do a greenhouse and I'm thinking about putting the greenhouse behind me right here. But there's a lot more that goes into the greenhouse. I wouldn't say it's more than the garden, but it's like another really big project. And it just seems like a lot to do all in one season, especially on top of the landscaping. But the landscaping is really like my lowest priority and kind of something that's just like really fun for me. So I'm not really like considering that work, honestly, like besides digging the holes, I just find it to be really fun. Okay, so the situation that I'm in with the greenhouse is I did have a greenhouse company that I was looking at. I did a lot of research on them and I was like ready to hit the purchase button like moments away from it. And I was like, well, let me just like wait for a second because I have a hard time spending money. As we've discussed with the wheelbarrow, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I mean, I'm good at spending money, but like when it comes to big purchases or things that I feel like I might be able to live without, I'm like more inclined to wait and just keep putting it off. So that's kind of what's happened with the greenhouse because if you haven't noticed already, the, the ground is on a slope. So the entire area that this garden is sitting on is on a slope. It's very slight, so I'm not worried about it like at all. It'll be totally fine but you'll see some of the posts are higher than others. All of the holes are three feet deep, but well, maybe like two and a half to three feet deep, give or take how hard it was to dig in that specific area because some of the area was so wet that the clay was just like, whew, sorry, there's a bag over there that just moved, it scared me. Um, the clay was so wet that it was just like compacting to the auger blade, so it was really hard to dig in certain areas, especially towards the woods. It was so much more wet over there. I mean, it makes sense because that's like the lower slope. But anyway, if I was to get a greenhouse this season, I would have to also go through the trouble of leveling the ground, which I would probably be able to hire someone to do, but I don't know how much it would cost, but really that's not what I'm worried about. My question for you is, I have two options for the greenhouse. So number one, I could go with a company that I've researched a lot and I know is like a good company. Uh, well, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, right? 
So I could go with that. It is much more expensive and it arrives to me in pieces, which means that it takes hours and hours and hours to assemble. That is pretty much the resounding review. Like everybody says it's a really, really awesome greenhouse, but it takes forever to build because like every single panel is individual and it all has to be put together by you at your house. So there's that. It arrives to you in pieces. It's more expensive and you have to assemble it. Okay. So that's one option and the design on that one I like a little bit more. It has like a barn top look like it just like looks pretty cool. I'll, I'll link them down below if you're interested because it is a company that I was going to purchase from and I might still I'm not sure but the design of that greenhouse I liked more but my father-in-law has a lot of connections with the Amish because there's a huge Amish communities here and up where he lives as well in the more rural area of Missouri. And so he knows an Amish company that sells and makes greenhouses. So with that, the price is substantially lower. The materials might be better. I'm not, I'd have to look into the materials of the other company, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the materials from the Amish greenhouse would be higher quality and longer lasting. And it's a lot cheaper. But with them, it has to be assembled at their location and then brought here. And the size of the greenhouse that I'm looking at is a 12 by 16 foot, which means that it would be about 12 feet tall at the highest, at the highest point. I just got off the phone with them a few hours ago, uh, which by the way, the Amish have phones. They have like a community phone. It's very interesting. Anyway, so there's that option. They weld together the frame, so I would know that it's extremely strong. If you're familiar with Amish craftsmanship, at all, you know that it's like really, really good. So I know that it would be like really, really well made. Okay, so there's that option. But the problem is that's like an hour or two away. I think two hours away from where I live right now. So it would have to be transported to me fully assembled uh, for two, two hour drive. So that means that I have to somehow get it delivered because obviously the Amish don't drive <laughs> or anything like that. So what would you do in this situation? I'm really curious to know what you guys would do because I'm kind of torn. One of them, like they're both, they both have pros and cons. Um, obviously the cheaper price and already assembled is extremely attractive, but the only problem is I have no idea how I would get it down here. Like I think that it would need to be put on a semi or like a 20 foot trailer as an oversized load. I'm not really sure what that would look like. Like maybe I'd need to hire an independent delivery company and I don't even know what that would look like. So I don't know if you have any ideas for me, that's probably the one that I'm leaning towards. But if you have any ideas for how I can transport the greenhouse effectively and cost effectively as well, let me know because I would still like to do the greenhouse. If I did the Amish greenhouse, I would probably do it this year. If I did the other greenhouse, which is much more expensive, I'd probably wait until next year. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys would do. Pretty curious and um, I just wasted a lot of time talking, but I'm really wanting to know what you think. Okay, so let's start tamping these holes and getting them all set so that they are ready to have boards screwed onto them and yeah, let's do this. All right, you guys, so here is what a lot of the posts are looking like. You can see that the clay is like mashed back up against it. So we did that because we didn't want the holes to fill with water. So my first step in all of this is to dig out really that like top layer of clay because it's really just like sitting on top of it. A few others I've uncovered and I can see right down to the bottom. It just kind of like covered the top. And then what I do is I get my bag of rocks and then I just start filling in the hole really, really tightly. I'll get the end of my shovel and like shove it in. <laughs> and then after that, I level the pole. So I'll take my level and look at it on one side. I'll put it against one side and then I'll put it on the other side, like next to each other sides, not opposite sides, so that I know that it's not swaying either way. And then from there, I'll like shift the pole around maybe add some more rock if I need it. And then I take the tamper and I just like shove it down flat so that it's really strong. All right, you guys, we're to the point where I can finally start drilling on the boards. And I feel like this is going to be the part that is the easiest. <laughs> Watch it not be the easiest at all. Um, I mean, I've drilled things before 
it should be okay. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is the actual drilling part. Like, am I gonna fail really badly? I don't know. We will have to see. So let me show you my materials that I've gathered for this. So obviously I have the boards, which are two by six by 12 boards. So we spaced out all of the, um, whatever these are called, 12 feet so that they could, well, 12 feet and a little bit less maybe so that they could attach to the boards. I don't know, the whole math thing, no clue. But the screws that I'm using are these ones. They're deck screws, I think, is what they look like. Just in case you're doing this too and you're wondering. Um, oh, it has the star bit, if you can see the star. And it came with a star bit, but the thing is, it's really short. But I think, I mean, obviously it's still like, I've got some space there. I don't know. Again, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Hello everybody. Welcome to another day of filming this video. Today is Saturday. Hopefully the day before you see this, if this goes up on time. Um, listen, yesterday was Friday. I was out here most of the day working and I was really hesitant to even leave in the footage because I made a lot of mistakes. But I think that's kind of the fun part is to see yourself make mistakes and learn from it. So I'm gonna leave it in, but I'm gonna walk you through what I did and why it's wrong. So the first thing that I did was I'm putting boards along the bottom edge of the garden, right? So I thought to myself, I want that, all of that to be level because the area that the garden is on is not level. It doesn't, it's not so big of an incline that it's gonna be a big deal for the plants. But as far as structure building, it is a problem and we probably should have leveled it, but at this point it's way too late, like kind of like a shoulda, coulda, woulda, maybe next time situation. But basically, I took the highest point of the entire garden and I started to drill the boards on from that spot and keep it all level. But what was happening is a lot of the boards would be so high up in the air that I had no idea how I was gonna fill that space underneath because I do have plans to put planters on the front of the garden bed, but it was like one or two feet off from the floor from the ground and that just would have been way too much space to fill in and it also just looked really stupid so I took that down and then I started to drill them in on the ground like flush with the ground angles and all and that worked really well it was also a lot faster because what I was doing before with the leveling I had to like pile up mud to get it level because I'm working by myself if I had a partner it would have been easier um, but in the end, that was not going to be a good solution. So what I realized this morning when I was trying to figure out how I was gonna get the fence on, because what I did was I bought a big roll of 100 feet of galvanized steel woven fencing. I have been watching this TikToker and Instagrammer. Um, she has two different names on the platforms, but I'll link her down below because her and her husband were like the ultimate inspo for this because they did exactly what I wanted to do, but like a, a month or two ago. So I had a lot of inspo to go off of, but I was watching, re-watching one of their videos this morning to see how they put on the fencing and I was like, oh shoot, they put the fence on and then they put the crossboards on. So, uh I had a bit of a frustrating morning just kind of coming to terms with the fact that I would have to undo everything that I did yesterday. It's extremely frustrating because I possibly could have been done with this yesterday if I did this all correctly, or even maybe this morning I could have been done, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that maybe today I will actually be able to finish this. We're just gonna have to see. It's a big learning experiment, and really at the end of the day, if we do something wrong, we can fix it, we can undo it. We were the ones who built it, so we know how it's being built, and it's just screws and wood, and you can undo that. So. That's pretty much what happened yesterday and how I'm fixing it today. So right now I'm gonna go around and unscrew all of these boards and uh, get the fencing set up. Ugh. That, it was really hard to come to terms with the fact that I made this gigantic mistake and wasted literally a full day, but it's okay. You know, this is my job. It's my job to learn these things now and we're doing it, okay? 
<laughs> so let's unscrew these boards and get the fence ready. We have yet again another fail on my hands. <laughs> so trying to put in this fencing was pretty difficult. And you know, honestly, at this point, I'm all out of fails. I have, you know, a certain amount of fail cards per project and I'm at my limit. I'm at the point where I'm just ready to call some people and get some help because obviously I have limited help and with Daniel not feeling well and me not knowing anything about any of this, it's been a little bit more difficult than I expected. And, you know, out of my own pride, I was like, I'm fine. I can do it on my own. But that's just not true. I'm thinking right now that I should have hired someone from the very beginning, but hopefully I'm able to rectify this by finding a handyman or a fencing company who can swoop in and save the day. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I will definitely be updating you next week on how this all goes. I really wanted it all to be in this video, but unfortunately that is not what happened. So I hope that you can bear with me to see the end of the fence saga, hopefully next week. So thank you guys very much for watching this video and joining me while I learn how to do these things. It's it's fun, it's hard, but we're doing it, right? So asking for help is okay and we can do that. Also, that's Cooper playing with his toy in the background. I'm not gonna re-record this, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys in next week's garden vlog. Bye.